this morning here. You know, uh, since we've been out with the corona, one of the things that I've noticed is it's it's would be really easy to go back to sleep and sleep in instead of you know go ahead and getting up at my normal time. But I'm gonna stick with my normal time of waking up because one of these days life is gonna be back to normal. And I want to be able to get up at the normal time. So today, I want to put another installment of my Heritage uh, Heritage Garden series in. It's a good day to plant. It's the 26th of March, and today is a good day to plant. So I've got some really old seed that I want to plant today, and I want to talk to you about a guy that means a lot to me. Hey guys, uh, this morning, you know, I told you we were going to plant some peas. Let me show you what, uh, what I got from a friend of mine many, many, many years ago. And then I quit gardening. So I've got this seed that I set that was saved and given to me as a special gift. And, uh, I didn't plant it for a long, long time. So I'm going to really try to get these up and going. Let's look at what this is. This is a red ripper cow pea given to me by a man named Lewis Jackson. Mr. Lewis was a very important person in my life and somebody that I admire and respect, and he's passed on. Before I talk about Mr. Lewis, let me tell you about this cow pea. So the cow pea is grown as a cover crop in, uh, in areas, and farmers would put these in their fields to, uh, to give the cows something to eat over the winter and cover up their beds to make sure that you know, the nitrogen was fixed in the soil. These cow peas that I've got, I've looked for some other red rippers in case these don't make it because red rippers is something that I would like to keep in my garden on a regular basis just because of what they mean to me and what Mr. Lewis meant to me. So the red ripper cow pea was grown in uh, the South around the Civil War and it kept a lot of people alive during those difficult times. You know, when the, the Northern troops came through and um, ravaged the South, uh, people needed food to survive, and the Red Ripper cow pea is one of those things that helped Southern families survive during that time. It's similar to a black-eyed pea or any of the other peas that might be grown, field peas, as you might have heard them call. But uh, it's different than a green pea, but it's just a dry bean pea. It's about 12 to 18 peas per pot, and uh, it's supposed to have a really nutty flavor. These, these seeds, like I say, are about 14 years old, so we may not get any germination out of these. But, y'all, seriously, the, the, the goal for me here is just to get up a couple of plants and have them reproduce so that I have seeds that have been adapted to Arkansas. The man who gave me these peas, his name is Lewis Jackson. The Jackson family moved into Arkansas sometime around the 1830s. And in the area where I live, they established their homestead um, in the wilds of Arkansas before Arkansas was even a state. Um, <clears throat> it, it's said that the Jackson family moved in with the Native American tribes that had been pushed out of the eastern country, eastern part of the country, and had settled into this region of Arkansas. And the Jacksons were some of the first families that were able to move into this area and coexist with the Native Americans and survive in Arkansas. They are really an important family in the area. Um, they're not a rich family, y'all. They're just common dirt people, you know, like they're farming and, and but the wisdom that this family has, Mr. Lewis in, uh, during the depression uh, was, was too young to go into the work camp. So he lied about his age and went into uh, the CCC work camps at a place called ICO. And it, it was just, it's not even really a town. It's just, it used to have a little gas station. It doesn't even have a gas station anymore. But Mr. Lewis on his walls had pictures of himself as a young man when he was 13 years old and um, went to help, you know, provide for his family at, at 13. Um, later, he was he was a World War II veteran and, and was in the, the Pacific War, uh, Pacific Theater of War. And he survived the Pacific Theater of War without any incident. Then later, he was on a peacekeeping mission in France after the war was over and ended up uh, uh, 
being blown up by either an old landmine or an old piece of ordnance that was unexploded, but it exploded on him. He lost he lost movement in, in one side of his body and, and his face had to be reconstructed. But, uh, you know, there were times in my life when I was really struggling with lots of different things. And Mr. Lewis was a huge positive in my life. His wife, Miss Lola, just salt to the earth, good people. And so these peas mean a tremendous amount to me as I, uh, as I plant them, I remember Mr. Lewis and the impact he had on my life. And I remember his beautiful wife, Miss Lola. I sat at their kitchen table more than one time and, and ate her good country cooking. Uh, just her, their son, Larry, who is a, a absolute friend of mine and, and, um, Lewis Jr. And Diana, just there's Cody, their grandchild and, and daughter, um, Melissa, who passed away, leave from cancer. They're just, they're, this family is just so, had, had so much impact on me as a person and as, as an individual. I just, I don't know. I just, I wanted to honor Mr. Lewis and his legacy and the heritage that he provided for me as a person because he's, he's an important part of who I am. You know, he, he put so much into me as a younger man when I was young, raising my families. And, uh, you know, we'd, we'd struggle going to church or whatever. And Mr. Lewis, I'll never forget the words he gave me. He says, son, no matter what you do, don't quit coming. And it's such a simple statement, you know. Um, I took those words to heart and, uh, you know, I stuck through and, and grew and developed as a person. And uh, I'm very thankful for, to Mr. Lewis that, you know, God put him in my life so that he could be an encouragement to me. And... Uh, He's an important part of my heritage as an individual and my family's heritage and the way I raised my kids and developed as a person. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. So here's what we're gonna do to try to get these old seeds to sprout. This is uh, around 120 cells. Uh, and I'm just gonna put a single seed in each one of these cells and hopefully out of this box of seeds and planting, you know, over 200 peas we can get a few pea plants to get a, a mother seed plant that will will provide us some fresh seed for uh, next year perhaps I'm gonna look for, for good seeds and anything that's not rotted, I'm just gonna go ahead and plant. Some of them have uh, holes in them. Y'all, these are really old, really, really old seed. I'm hoping that I can get a few to grow. I did try to sprout some of these earlier just to check the germination and all I was able to get out of them was a white looking fungus that came off the peas. They are so old, they may never grow y'all, but it's worth a try.
So I've got that tray planted, and now I'm just gonna lightly cover the tops of these. I don't want them to struggle too much because the, the seeds are so old. I don't know how much energy the little se seedlings still have left in them. So uh, I'm just gonna lightly touch the top of this with some dirt so they can hold some moisture down on the seeds. And uh, that's our tray of red rippers, y'all. I'm gonna give these a good soak. So we've got, I don't know, about 70 plants out of uh, four six pack trays. And then my wife, she up potted uh, one, two, three, four trays yesterday of tomatoes. So we're gonna have plenty of tomatoes. But, and that's not even counting these that are older. You know, there's one, two, three, four, five trays of tomatoes there, 15 times five. How many is that? 50 plus another 20 for 75, there's 75. So we've got probably 150, 200 tomato plants. The neighbor is got his, he, the neighbor does have his tractor out today and he's um, tilling some ground and then he's gonna let me borrow his tiller so I can till up some more of my yard. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be growing some stuff here, y'all. And um, without the coronavirus thing going on, there's so much of this that I would have not been able to get done. So the coronavirus is really a blessing. Can I even say coronavirus without YouTube? The last two videos I've tried to upload saying the word, uh, they have not uploaded. So maybe I need to make sure that that is not a part of what I'm saying. And these little peppers, I'm just gonna give them a little drink. Oops, I'm gonna do that from the bottom, not from the top. Get some water. So you may remember I've been catching rainwater. You can see the level on there, it's about full. But I was watching a channel the other day he showed me how to make one of these. That's a two inch rubber connector with um, hose clamps and it comes like that. That's a two inch insert a reducer to a three quarter thread and then a three quarter, three quarter small piece of pipe and three quarter end for the water hose. We're gonna get some water out of this. Let's turn this dude on. Rain water. 